Every once in a while, God does the strangest things. I'll have messages on my heart and just not enough time to preach them. And God will shut every one of them down and sort of lay on my heart a scripture I've talked about not too awful long ago. But one of the reasons, uh, as I go through the uh, week, I, I face a lot, a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems people are facing. A lot of storms in life. You, you know what a storm is? You ever been in a storm? One of the things that you find if you uh, study God's Word, if you want to become a sure enough theologian, one that knows the Word of God, you look at the Scripture, find out what it meant at that time. And then you bring it down, what does that mean in our time, in our day? Then you bring it one step farther, where a lot of times we fail to do. What does it mean to me personally? What is God saying to me personally? And that's uh, what I want to look at today. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to Mark chapter 4. All right, Mark chapter 4, will you look with us? And the same day in the afternoon, Jesus said unto his disciples, let us pass over on the other side. And when they sent away the multitude, they took even him even as he was into the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And while they were passing, while they were going, there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat upon the ship, so that it was now sinking. It was full. And Jesus went back in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillar. And they went and awakened him and said unto him, Master, don't you care? Don't you care? We're, we're fixing to die. Do, do you not care? And Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And Jesus said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, We see something that he can do that we never realized. What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. I want to tell you, there's going to be storms in your life. One of the reasons for storms is to test and see if we sure enough got faith. I think sometimes storms come to check, to see if we really, really sure enough believe God. Listen to me. True biblical faith. Hear me now. True faith is from heaven above. The Bible says it's a gift from God. Faith itself is a gift from God. Now, everybody believes some things. You understand. Everybody has some faith. We have faith in that pew. We have faith in elevators. We have faith in cars and stuff like that. But that's human faith. Biblical faith is different from that. Biblical faith is a gift from God Himself. And it's supernatural in its origin. That means nothing on earth, hear me, hear me, nothing on earth can destroy real faith, God-given faith. So sometimes we'll go through some some tests, we'll go through some hardships that just test, do you really, really believe in God? Do you really believe that? One of the things it appears, as you look at this, it appears that Jesus didn't care. Where was he at when the storm was coming on? He back there snoozing, sleeping. You know, one of the things that it appears is that God really doesn't care what we're going through. You ever been there? Well, if you hadn't, you will be. That old devil will say, God don't care anything about you. God says even the hair that falls off your head is important to him. A sparrow, a nothing. Every time it falls, he knows. Oh, God loves too, but I, I tell you, he loves us so much that God will allow sometimes to be put in storms to bring us to himself more completely. And to show us some things about himself that we didn't know before. 
think I've ever gone through a storm that I didn't come out on the other side. Lord, I don't want to go through it again. I wouldn't take millions of dollars what you taught me and how you brought me through. What a miraculous bringing you had. No, but sometimes when we're going through a storm, it does seem like God's not interested. I'll tell you something about God. Anything, hear me? Anything that causes us to pray is good. Anything that will cause us to come to the Lord is good. True faith would say, the Lord is on this ship with me. He's with me. If I go down, I'd rather go down with Him on the ship than be on the land without Him. If God's not worried about it, why should I worry about it? See, we learn some things as we go through tragedies and problems and suffering. We learn some things that, that uh, God is more in charge than what we'd ever seen. And here He is going up. Yep, I, I want you to see something. Now, they were right in the midst of being in the will of God. Who was, whose idea was it they go across the sea? Jesus. He said, now let's go across. They were right in the midst. And sometimes we get thinking, well, Lord, I'm serving you. Why am I? I don't, I don't understand everything. I know one of these things. I know God is good all the time. If he's good in the good times, he's good in the bad times, or he's not God. God works all things together for the good of those that love him. And while we don't understand it, I'm going to leave it in God's hands. In the will of God, they went through a storm. You always think, well, if I'm doing the will of God, I, I shouldn't have any trouble. You remember when the Lord sent old Ananias down there to baptize Paul, Saul, who became Paul? He said, now, Ananias, uh, go down there and baptize him, and you show him all the things he's going to get to suffer for my sake. What kind of calling is that? Lord, I, I tell me how many folks are going to be saved and how the Colosseums are going to be full and everybody's going to be talking about the name of, of Paul. Tell me about those things. I may sign up. He said, no, you show Paul all the things he must suffer for my sake. Oh, we don't do much of that, do we? We whine a lot. We fuss a lot. Very seldom for His glory. They were in the will of God. The storm come. It looked like, Lord, it, we're going to go under. We're going we're gonna to perish. Don't you even care what's going on? And the Lord stood and He stilled the wind and the sea. And they saw something about the Lord that day they'd never seen before. Saw how powerful He is. But you know, there's some times OLB goes through some storms. And I wonder if anybody likes me, everybody hates me. Think I eat a worm. You ever get there? And it seems like everything's bad, not good. And there'll be that test, and I say, well, Lord, why? Well, I think it's for me to experience God in a way I hadn't experienced Him before. And I'll draw an eye, and I'll cry out to God, and that's what He was wanting all the time. You know, that's what the Lord wants from us, is to cry out to Him. And when we cry out to Him, He's able to fix stuff, steal storms, and and bring deliverance in, in mighty ways. I want to ask you a question. You reckon Judas his carrot was on that ship? Shake your head up and down. You know that rascal was on there? Now, you think about it. Judas saw different miracles, feeding the 5,000, the 3,000, seeing seeing these men raising people, and he's in this storm. You want to say, Judas, what's it going to take for you to see your need of me? I wonder sometimes, don't you? I sure hate to go through this here life with all its storms. The fact is, storms happen to you if you're saved or not. 
But one thing I have, as I know the Lord's in that storm with me. If I go down, I'm going down with Him. If I get through it, it's going to be because I'm with Him. Whatever it is. As long as He's there with me, I'm going to make it, folks. But to think that Judas, God spoke to him through good stuff, blessings, and on and on and on, and then showed him death and delivered him, and it still didn't help him. How many times has God blessed you? Too many to count, ain't it? How many times has God showed you how easy it would be to, for you to just die? You know, I preached a 31-year-old, 32-year-old funeral in the last couple of weeks. Can you believe that? People ain't supposed to die like that till after they get past 38. But they do. One of them, healthy as a hog, just died. What, what would it take? What does God have to show us? He shows us a blessing and say, listen, I want to be in your life. <laughs> I say, well, I'm too busy. Then he shows us tragedies and he shows us hurt and pain. He says, I want to be there with you. We've got no time. I, I wonder... What will it take? What will it take? Strange, isn't it? Take the Holy Spirit of God. I know that. All my preaching, all the other preaching, unless God opens your heart, shows you the wonderful Savior, you're going to walk out without Him. And you that uh, may be going through some storms, if God doesn't open your faith and just help you to see you're going to go out still struggling with the Lord. This, this don't seem like it's fair. It stinks. Well, you wait until God gets you through before you give up on Him, will you? Will you stand with us, please? Father, you, uh, you know who's going through a storm today. You know what kind of storm it is. And Father, sometimes it's just a storm to show us if our faith is real. Can we praise you and the ashes of life. When we've lost our home, when we've lost a husband, a wife, when we've lost a, a, a family member, when, when we've uh, lost a job, can we still trust you? God, I know the answer to that because I've been there so many times. But God, you are good. Even amidst the ashes of life, you're good. And Father, today in my own heart, I want to reaffirm my faith in you. God, I want you to bore my ear if it's not bored. I want you to be a testimony that this preacher said on this occasion, I want Jesus as my Lord and Master all of my days. I want to reaffirm my faith in you. But Father, there may be someone here, boy or girl, young person, mother or dad or a visitor that's never given their heart to you. You blessed them so much just with health itself. You blessed them with their family. You blessed them with financial needs. But God, uh, you've also spoke to them through the years, through tragedies, through bad things. And Father, if they're still not giving their heart to you, I pray today, God, that you would draw them to you. Open their eyes that they may see. Quicken their heart that they may believe. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be in one of those storms and all you can think about doing is crying out to God. Well, that's done its purpose then, hasn't it? Thou what if we don't cry out to God? I think there'll probably be other storms along the line. See, if that purpose is to bring us to the Lord, and it doesn't get us there, there may be other storms, one after another, till we learn as a Christian. 
God wants us to cry out to Him. You've never given your life to the Lord. What's He going to have to do? Will you be like Judas? Shove away all of His drawings to one day just die and go to a devil's hell? It's so sad to see it, to know, and to miss it all. 